So today I'm going to answer a question that I get a lot in the comment section, uh, in private messages, during workshops, lectures. Uh, people always ask me the same uh, questions. And one of these questions is, which one of the Olympus lenses is my favorite lens? Um, that's actually not an, an easy uh, answer to give for this particular question. And uh, I know there are people watching now saying, oh, this is an OM system ambassador and he got all this stuff for free uh, to clear that out. I've been an ambassador for about two years at the moment and everything that you've seen on the table here, except for this white one, this one is actually on loan from OM system. So it's not mine. Um, but all the other stuff is bought by myself with my own money and before I became an ambassador, except for the OM1 Mark II. Uh, which I purchased recently, and the 300 millimeter, which I bought uh, last year. But for the rest, all of this stuff is my own camera gear. So it's not owned by OM system or anything. And I became an ambassador because I just love to use their products. Uh, not because I got the products for free, because I already got the products. I've been using uh, Olympus slash OM system gear for over 25 years. Um, I just uh, love the system. and. That's what I wanted to state in front of this uh, video. Um, yeah, these are the lenses that I uh, own, except for this one, which I said is on loan from OM system. I probably already had to return this thing a while ago, but somehow it's still around in my home. So uh, <laughs> not quite sure when I'm going to return that, but I probably should. But um, yeah, first of all, uh, there are a couple of lenses that I've used and um, I tried them out, I owned them and uh, uh, traded them uh, for the Micro Four Thirds system um, that I uh, want to explain a little bit why I uh, did that. First of all, I had the 100 to 400 from Panasonic Leica, uh, that's a couple of years ago now, and I eventually exchanged it for this 100 to 400 from uh, Olympus. Um, why this? stabilization works with the camera body and the Panasonic Leica stabilization doesn't work with the camera body. So um, first of all the sharpness uh, of the images is much better with this one in my opinion. It's easier to use, uh, easier to handle than the uh, Panasonic Leica and yeah it's, it's, it just suits the system better. You, it feels like an Olympus lens. For example if I want to zoom with an Olympus lens I turn to the left with the Panasonic Leica, you have to turn to the right to zoom out. Uh, totally different and uh, it frustrated me a lot. <laughs> uh, just a simple thing in the field. But um, I'm very happy with that uh, exchange um, for also the 90mm macro, which I would really love to uh, add to this set of lenses. But look at this 60mm, there's no stabilization in this one, so this is a little bit harder to, to focus with. And the 90 millimeter is more fun to use. But this lens, I even took it recently to Sweden. I didn't take any pictures with it, which is actually a shame. I, I could have easily photographed a lot of ice crystals with it or something like that. But it's so light and small that you can take it any day. And for me as a landscape photographer, uh, I never have the intention to go out for macro photography. So I always bring this one in my uh, bag. So this is in my, my standard uh, kit, uh, there's al always this particular 60mm uh, macro and it's a 2.8, so a really good lens with a nice bouquet. Um, yeah, I would never, uh, yeah, never want to trade uh, uh, this one. Um, so the 90mm, maybe I will buy it eventually, but uh, I don't know if I will trade it in for the 60mm or use it as an addition. Um, the 150 to 600, you recently saw it in a video, I really like that lens and if I would only be interested in bird photography then that would be a really nice uh, lens to use. But to bring it along uh, with uh, my standard kit as a landscape photographer, um, I think it's a little bit too big, a little bit too heavy, uh, but that nothing to do with the quality of the lens. Uh, it's just um, it, it doesn't suit the kit that I would like to take with me uh, every day. So uh, I also owned a uh, 12 to 60 from Panasonic Leica, uh, but once again, the same for the 100 to 400. I just didn't like uh, that system uh, with my uh, own system slash Olympus body. So I traded that and I think I bought the 12 to 40 then. This, this was one of the 
uh, first uh, micro four turtle lenses that I uh, actually bought. So uh, eventually I traded all my four thirds gear uh, for uh, this stuff. So I had a 11 to 22 four thirds lens. I had a 5200 uh, four thirds lens and I all traded them for the micro four thirds system that is in front of you right now. And I did that because this is just way lighter. Th this stuff is um, so light and small that I can really take along a lot of uh, lenses and adjust myself to all the uh, situations. Well, let's look at what I ha uh, also have on the table here. So this is the 300 millimeter F4. Uh, bought that last year uh, with my own money once again. So uh, this is my lens. Uh, the 40 to 150, this has uh, been with me for a long time. Uh, I think this was the second lens that I bought after the 12 to 40, but the 100 to 400, uh, which I uh, traded for the Panasonic Leica version, um, the 12 to 100 lens. Um, this is a bit of an overkill lens, but what I missed in my kit was a lens that I could put on the camera uh, when I went to, for example, the zoo with my family, uh, my kids, and I just wanted one lens that I could use all day long for uh, to photograph them and this is a stabilized lens uh, a very good focal range it's not that that heavy so i can really use this to photograph uh, my kids and some animals in the zoo and i can just use this lens so this is uh, I, I don't use it much when i'm uh, in the field uh, because i prefer to take the 12 to 40 with the 40 to 150 uh, because these are both 2.8 lenses and just in my opinion a little bit uh, sharper um, than this one but it's an extremely good lens uh, and I particularly bought it for my home situation here for uh, photographing my children. Um, let's have a look here uh, the 12 to 12 millimeter here um, that I used in Sweden then and the 7 to 14 and on this camera the OM1 is the 45 millimeter 1.2 um, really really strong um, uh, aperture for this uh, particular lens so um, yeah really good for portraits and that kind of stuff so if you look at what is my favorite lens well uh, that is difficult if you look at what are my most used lenses um, i think it's the 12 to 40. i think most of my shots uh, are shot with this lens the 12 to 40 millimeter uh, very capable, very sharp. Um, yeah, it's it's weather sealed. It's got everything that I want uh, as a landscape photographer. A pretty wide angle, so it's a full frame equivalent of 24 to 80 millimeters. Um, and this is almost always the lens that is on the camera when I go out for photography. So this is the standard lens that I uh, use uh, when uh, I, I get the camera out of the bag. So this is on the camera, in the bag. So if I get the camera out, this is on it. So most used lens. Um, I think after that comes this one. It's the 40 to 150. And I, I love this thing. So this is such a good focal range. Uh, so it's 80 to 300 millimeters, uh, full frame equivalent, weather sealed. Uh, yeah absolutely crisp sharp images with this one so i'm still impressed with this particular lens and i'm actually uh, wondering if they are ever going to make this uh, with stabilization like the uh, 12 to 100 uh, maybe in a future version or uh, something but uh, yeah, i would really love to uh, to try that if it comes out but i just love this uh, uh, this this focal range and i take a lot of images i think Maybe it's fair to say that uh, 70 to 80% of my images are shot with these two lenses. So the 12 to 40 2.8 and the 40 to 150 2.8. Uh, absolutely my most used lenses. Um, and then uh, it comes a bit of a, a difficult one. So uh, the 7 to 14, I rarely use it. It's a magnificent lens. It's far too expensive. Uh, for the amount of time that I use this but that 7 millimeter has saved me a couple of times I took a couple of really nice shots with the 7 to 14 um, and it's just that that extreme wide angle that I uh, sometimes uh, that need 
uh, and which I can't uh, reach with that 12 to 40. And especially when I want to get really close, uh, then this is the lens I want to go to. But th those situations I don't come across really much uh, in the Netherlands. So uh, it's mostly uh, what I use on holidays uh, when I go to visit waterfalls or rocky areas where I can really use those foreground rocks to amplify uh, uh, my foreground. And um, then this is the lens I want to go to. But it's by far not my uh, favorite lens. Um, I do a lot, if you watch this channel regular, then you know that I do a lot of long lens telephoto landscape photography. And that's why I uh, actually bought this lens, the 100-400, to um, which is absolutely a great lens um, yeah, for landscape photography. You know, the amount of reach that you have with this one uh, for long distance shots, yeah, it's absolutely insane. But... Uh, at the long end, if you come to 350 millimeters and above, this lens gets a little bit soft. And that is quite a shame, actually. So last year, I was able to purchase the 300 millimeter here. Um, the 300 millimeter is, mm, yeah, actually, I think a wildlife and bird photography lens. That's what I designed for. But I noticed that I am using this lens more and more for landscape photography also. Um, and especially when it comes above 350 millimeters, I started to use the 300 millimeter with a 1.4 converter. And that delivered me crispier images than with the 100 to 400. Of course, it had to suit the focal range because uh, it's a prime, so it's a fixed uh, 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 focal range. And that makes it a bit of a difficult lens to use. I can only use this in particular situations. But I wanted to add this for uh, example, if I saw some wildlife, if I saw some birds, uh, all that stuff. So that's why I actually uh, bought the 300 millimeter next to the 100 to 400, which actually is a little bit overkill, but it, it has its purpose for uh, the type of photography that I just like to do. Um, then the white one, the 150 to 400, absolutely the best lens here on the table. But with 7,500 euros, uh, yeah, I think that's uh, it's, it's fair to say that it, you it, it's a logical thing that this is by far uh, the most uh, best lens here on the table. But um, is it worth that amount of money? You can definitely do the job with the 100, the 400 and the 300. Um, but uh, why, I own, why I borrowed this is actually these two lenses combined weigh almost 3 kilo, 2.9 kilo if I'm not mistaken. Um, this lens replaces those two uh, in my bag. So I can bring one lens uh, which only weighs about 2 kilo, I think 2 0.1 kilo. So it saves me about a kilogram of weight uh, if I'm taking this one instead of those two. And that's what I uh, really like uh, about this lens, that it, it brings me a, a much more uh, a dynamic set so, uh, of, of lenses. Um, that, that leaves the question, what is my favorite lens of these lenses? And Actually, the really fair answer is that I don't have a, a favorite lens. What I like about this system is that it brings me so much uh, uh, vers versatility, versatile. I don't know how to say it in English, but uh, I can shoot any scene with this particular set. Uh, so I, if I look at what's my uh, set at the moment with this borrowed uh, 150 to uh, 400. I have the 12 to 40, uh, the 40 to 150, the 60 millimeter macro, so I'll put this one away, and the 7 to 14. And this set of lenses is in my bag um, on every trip that I'm on at the moment. Um, and it gives me the ability to photograph everything that I see from a macro shot to a bird, a wildlife, a deer, uh, whatever you want, a wide angle shot, uh, telephoto landscape shots, and everything in between 
is possible with this uh, very compact lightweight kit. Um, that's what I love about the system and it's not that I, I really love one lens more than another um, actually but it's, the, it's the, the dynamics of this particular set that, that really uh, keep me with this brand. Um, if, if I would have uh, shot a full frame uh, equivalent I would always have to uh, think in front what am I going to shoot today am I going to shoot a wide angle am I going to shoot large telephotos am I going for birds wildlife macro I don't have to make that decision in the morning I just pick up my bag with these five lenses in it at the moment and I can shoot everything that I want uh, on that day everything that I come across with this set and that is what in my opinion is the power of uh, this particular system so the, it's it's not in one lens but it's in a set of lenses and uh, I know it's a bit of overkill because I could also say to leave those two out for example and take the 12 to 100 uh, then I'm missing a little bit of focal range with the uh, 100 to 150 millimeters um, but this would mean that I have a very very lightweight kit um, yeah, for example, if I go for a really, really strong long hike, I could take only these two lenses um, and have a really versatile uh, kit. And yeah, that's that's what I love. And what I said, unfortunately, I'm probably going to have to return this pretty soon. And I'm actually considering to buy this thing myself. So um, I am going to have to save a lot of money <laughs> to buy this. But uh, if I do, I'm probably going to sell the 300 millimeter and the 100 to 400 because they have uh, no use for me uh, at that uh, particular moment anymore because this 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 is definitely better than these two lenses but the 300 millimeter is a bit sharper crispier than the 150 to 400 uh, in my opinion but because it's a fixed aperture it's not as easy to use as this one and this one of course has more reach with uh, the 400 millimeter and the built-in teleconverter so uh, you can definitely shoot longer uh, distance images with uh, uh, this particular lens so yeah the answer to the question is really simple there is not one single lens that is my favorite it's just the set of lenses and um, yeah I, I hope you enjoyed this video I hope you learned a little bit something about why I choose a certain uh, uh, amount of kit why I own uh, these lenses um, yeah they, they all have their own purpose uh, they all have their own um, ability and for example uh, I'm now filming this on uh, a, a different camera but usually when I uh, film something at home I if, uh, film it with the EM5 Mark III and the 12 millimeter uh, 2.0 lens on it so this is the lens that I use for filming um, yeah so every lens here has its own purpose and um, yeah that's that's what I love about the system so I hope I answered uh, that question uh, for for once and for all and uh, yeah I hope you uh, you liked this video so thanks for watching uh, if you like the video don't forget please push the subscribe button underneath this video and there is also a subscribe button sorry please <laughs> push the thumbs up button uh, that will definitely help leave a comment uh, and let me know if you have a favorite lens uh, or not um, yeah and please push the subscribe button uh, you will massively help this channel uh, to grow so hope to see you next week bye bye